Please welcome Hachelier Ros Gandhi, Humboldt University of Berlin. Hi everyone, I'm Hasha Ros Gandhi from Max Planck and uh, Humboldt University. I'm a natural scientist and a design teacher, and I've been mentoring motor skin since the early inception of the idea of a fluid-driven, interactive wearable, and through the growth of their startup. For me, uh, motor skin is a great example of bio-inspired design. They are the story of how you can take ideas from science and translate them to design concept. They're also a great example of interdisciplinarity in action. How science and uh, how, how ideas, concepts, tools, and methodologies of science and design can come together hand in hand, not only for a development of a final product, but from early stage on, posing the right questions, assessing the possibilities and constraints on the way, uh, exploring various uh, solution pathways and adapting them to real life scenarios. They are not a mere soft robotic product. For me, they are a creation strategy from science and design questions and ideas with science and design tools, methodologies, and concepts and toward the science-design uh, solution. Thank you. Breaking the wall to wearable robots for daily life. Jose Bijatoro, Motor Skins. So, breaking the world to wearable robots for daily life. Through textiles that come to life. What exactly do we mean by that? And what is Motor Skins? So, in the beginning, as uh, Kashaira was saying, we set out to use bio-inspired design to rethink assistive technology. Because you see, there is a complexity gap between, on the one hand, completely passive but affordable solutions that are based on traditional textiles and garments, and on the other hand, more complex and powerful machines that are expensive and also need a power source. So the question here, and rather our answer to the question of how to bridge this gap, are reactive textiles. So what we do is, Unlike other solutions out there, we take our inspiration from nature, where the movement is programmed into the material itself. That means we don't need to integrate any electric or mechanic components. We just use pneumatics or hydraulics and clever design to program the movement. What we have then is a technology platform, and it led us to our first MVP, a dynamic compression garment for uh, various conditions. It gives you oscillating compression as you walk without the use of batteries or motors. It's powered by your own steps. So this means we create uh, less waste. We are fully washable. And since it's only textile, of course, it's uh, scalable and affordable. We're also rethinking the interior of cars. So if you think about the year 2050, you'll be sitting in your self-driving car, and you don't have any controls. You don't need them. It's an autonomous vehicle. Except when you do need them, they emerge from the nearest textile, a textile that can give you haptic feedback or adjust the comfort of your seat. We also have two EU projects running. One is sustainability for fashion, where we explore the concept of haptic aesthetics for the visually impaired. And the other one, Galactica, where we are developing a cooling garment for the airspace industry and safety at work. We are also partnering with Fraunhofer Ventures to push this textile-based metamaterial even further. In the future, we see these areas merging together towards wearable interfaces for AR and VR. This is what we mean when we say we bring textiles to life. So the smart and interactive textile market is growing at a rate of 26% uh, right now towards 13 billion euros. And the next trend is precisely towards textiles that can not only send some parameter or put on a light show, but that can actually react, that can move and help you move, like ours. And when you think of all of the fields in which we could apply our technology, the potential becomes larger. The question is, OK, how do we access it? Well, the way that we work is we work with companies in these fields that have specific needs. We integrate our technology into their products, 
and then scale by licensing our IP and know-how. This is possible thanks to an amazing team with a diverse background from chemistry, biophysics, business, communication, um, industrial design, and of course, textiles. Together, we are building a lab for textile-based soft robotics. Together, we build movement. So even though right now we've obtained several grants, we are closing our first round of investment for a 500K for the next 12 months, which will invest in our team and in growing the business uh, even more. So if you're interested, go and find me, let's talk, or send us an email online. Um, and as a parting thought, I just want to leave you with this. Touch. Touch is essential to who we are. It's the first way that we have to interact with the world. Your whole body is made of skin, two square meters of it. And that skin is constantly <coughs> in contact with textiles. Textiles that are familiar, they feel safe, they're comfortable. So believe me when I tell you that you can forget about Iron Man, because the future of interaction are soft robotic textiles. Thank you very much. It's also a sales pitch, right? You're the model. It's a catwalk, actually. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> OK, let's go into the questions. We have the first one here, please, and a second one here. Thank you, Levin. Thanks. Um, so can you tell me how it works? Um, sure. So it's only textile-based. So what we do is we design uh, these systems. We design the circuits. And we choose the right materials to go with it. And with that, we can program the function into a material. If you think of the pine cone, it moves even though it's dead. It's just reacting. And that is due to how the fibers are arranged with regard to one another. So by choosing uh, the right arrangement of materials and with the right circuit, we can create movement. OK, next question. Hey, Mike, please. Could you talk about how this could be, how you envision manufacturing this at scale, and if you were changing designs, and how you would integrate that? So the advantage is that it's textile-based, and that is an industry that goes uh, centuries. Uh, so the processes are well established. So that's why it's scalable. It's roll-to-roll uh, -roll production, uh, welding, cutting, standard things. Um, if you want to change the design, of course, that's why we start with a development phase of, OK, let's see uh, what this company needs. Can we do it? Is it feasible? Yes, OK. Um, then we fix the design and move to production, which is what we will do next year with uh, one of our companies already. OK, next question. We see if I have time. Yes, Geneviève, please. Could you tell me how you can cool down body temperature? You had the hinted at one example. Yes. So that's a, that's a new project that is made for collaboration between uh, companies in Europe. So our partner in Slovenia is working on the control elements, so uh, smart sensing of temperature and um, circling of uh, cooled liquid. And we work on the, on the fluid circuit. So we target specific areas, and we make the exchange more efficient by increasing the, the surface area of contact with the liquid. OK, thank you. Next question here again, Hemai. So specifically with regard to the haptic feedback applications, VRAR, what, is it, what are the competing technologies, and what's your key advantage here? So for haptic feedback specifically, I would say the most uh, popular would be uh, vibration feedback. And when you think of different products, uh, our advantage is that we're, so we're completely flat. You don't have any, anything below here. Um, it creates less waste because there are no uh, metals inside. You don't have half the periodic table in, inside of your garment. It's uh, easily, uh, more easy to recycle. Um, it doesn't require as much energy and doesn't generate any heat. No, so. mm -hmm. OK, do we have a further question for this project and textiles which come to life? Yes? Oh, here, sorry, yes, please. 
Yeah, um, it, it would be great if you could uh, explore a bit uh, the, the sustainability and uh, recyclability uh, um, issues. So, because they are very specific in use, as I understand. So, how recyclable are these materials? Mm -hmm. Of course, that's why uh, I was saying compared to uh, smart textiles. So we are um, we are laminating textiles uh, with polymers, but uh, we don't include any additional elements. So uh, when we take materials that are uh, biosourced, for example, then we improve the carbon footprint of our uh, of our whole assembly, but it's always a, a matter of comparability. We are uh, more easily exchangeable, for example. So uh, smart textiles, you wash five times by hand, and then you throw away uh, and get a new one. Us, we focus on durability uh, as a form of sustainability, long-lasting uh, products. Yeah. Yes. Thank you I very think, much. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it's exactly it's the end of the time for the question. Thank you so much. Right, you can give right. the clicker back here.